It's the KSO Show, and it's time to preview week four between the Kansas State Wildcats and the Oklahoma State Cowboys. K-State. Oh, first off, I am Derek Young. I'm joined by Grant Flanders, unfortunately. <laughs> and and uh, K-State undefeated. Oklahoma State undefeated. Uh, Not surprised. Last, well, just. About, about K-State. Oklahoma, Oklahoma State narrowly yeah, they got, they got undefeated. The, the officials helped. Help them get past Boise State a little bit. Uh, late, last-second reactions to the win over Nevada last week. Go. Uh, obviously, I think they the defense kept going. What was the first two really good weeks and dominated a really good offense in Carson Strong, who is still, I think, a top-tier quarterback um, and probably obviously goes in the first round of the NFL draft. But K-State really bottled them up and didn't allow – to work on the ground and I mean they didn't really they tried the ground game a lot it didn't work and they continue to try that but the defense kept it going and that's the thing I like about this team the most and Will Howard also didn't have any picks or turnovers which was huge Jaron Lewis even moved the ball here and there even though he didn't really have any kind of throw that was really uh, anything of note so but uh, overall, they got the dub, and they did it in convincing fashion against a good Nevada team. So, overall, you should feel good if you're a K-State fan going into Big 12 play against Oklahoma State. Yeah, I called it one of the best wins of the Chris Kleiman era. They did it by only throwing it 13 times, playing great defense, and running the ball super well. Can they do it again against Oklahoma State with that exact formula? Uh, not the exact formula, but slightly modified, very close. I think. I agree. I think yeah. it's going to have to be a similar formula. Very because similar. Because I don't think you can do it by airing it out if Skylar no. Thompson's not your quarterback. Exactly, and I think you're better off running too with Will Howard and using more read options for him and get him going in that respect because that also gets that also gets Irvin and obviously Deuce Vaughn going as well because how, one thing we've noticed, I think Howard has been really good at is picking reads really well and figuring out when to hand it off and when not to and that gets going his running backs that are really dynamic as well as him but he he needs to figure out how to throw the football but I'm still not in the the area where I can say I trust this man to throw over 20 20 times a game without seeing one pick I I would I would tend to bet money that he probably throws one pick out of 20 times especially against a defense like Oklahoma State yeah, if you throw too much in this game, this probably goes for both teams, both K-State and Oklahoma State. The team that throws too much is probably going to lose, but you're going to have to throw it a little bit more or throw enough yeah. to win. So the, the needle and how you thread that, it's pretty narrow, but that's going to be pretty important. If either team throws this ball 30 times, that team probably lost. Yep. Let's put it that way. Cause then Cause they, Spencer Sanders is the same story, if not even more so, of a turnover problem than what Will Howard was just in you know, the SIU game and some problems he had last year. Nevada, he showed some progress that he can be a game manager. Sanders has always been, uh-oh, hold your breath when he's gocking back. But he might throw a dime, but sometimes he's way off. I would agree. Mm -hmm. We already touched on a Skyler Thompson injury. Don't expect him back this week, obviously, against Oklahoma State, although it did sound like he made considerable progress throughout the week. Two more injuries to touch on. Chris Kleiman revealed on Tuesday when we spoke to him at his weekly press conference. Khalid Duke out for the season. Um, yeah. And before we get to the next note, just how significant is that? I mean, it's, it's really significant. It should not be taken lightly because – it not only lessens the depth, but Duke's probably the most dynamic player on that defensive line as far as a pure pass rushing standpoint, talent-wise, because of his skill and ability combined with his athleticism and quick twitch for this a guy of his size. Everything that Kali Duke brings to the table, they don't really have a guy that matches that to an exact tee. But also, this does give a chance for guys like Nate Matlack and Spencer, Spencer Trussell to step into what that role is is and when Khalid Duke is out there, which is is a guy that mostly uh, you know rushes the passer, but can sometimes you know drop back and try to disrupt the passing game. And <clears throat> excuse me, the the second injury note probably hasn't been revealed a whole too a whole lot or too much is the loss of Reggie Stubblefield. I believe it'll just be for this game, but we are not expecting. 
who has really become K State's yeah. starting nickel to to play against the Cowboys on Saturday night. You know, some people might want to say Amaris Brown, but he I don't think he's there yet. You know, in the off season, we would have thought that he would be the guy if Stubblefield was injured or not ready to go. He would probably play the nickel if it, if it's the nickel. I think it would be Amaris Brown. Yeah, I, know I guess you, that's true. I know where you're getting getting at it. It's because Oklahoma State primarily more of a threat to yeah. run the ball this year than pass me. So it, it, you're not probably going to be in Nicola as much yeah. as you would against Oklahoma State in, in prior years. You'll probably be more in a three linebacker look, mm-hmm. which that instead of a nickel. And in that case, like you were about to say, you're bringing on probably Ryan Hennington. Ryan Hennington, Wayne Jones when, when he can't go. But Hennington has been actually, I think, solid at times. Um, still, you know, not the most ideal. You'd rather just have Khalid Duke out there. You know, more often than not, but um, still, regardless. You mean, you mean Stubblefield? Yeah. I mean Stubblefield. Well, yeah, I'm sorry, actually. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm still uh, thinking Ryan, about Ryan, Ryan Hankton's not playing on the <laughs> God, almost almost swore on the, the KSO show, but I could have done it. I really could have, but, I, you know, I try to keep it as square as possible on these. Of if you course. want to see me, you know, check out my Twitter feed. If you want to see me go off from time to time. Um what were we talking about? Oh, yeah, so Stubblefield, it honestly is too bad that he did get injured because Amaris Brown, we don't know really what we're going to get from him. He could, you know, he could be what they saw from him in the preseason, but Kleiman has been yet to say that he's truly ready to step into that nickel position, I think. But maybe this week they'll have some confidence with him there. Who do you think is behind him, though, in that scenario? Ross Elder, Sincere Mason even, or is that even out of the question? It's probably to be determined. I don't yeah. I don't necessarily know. I mean, Ross Elder did play a little nickel during spring ball, fall camp. Maybe it's him. <laughs> the, but maybe it's Sincere Mason, like you said, yeah, too. Yeah, it's an inch. Int- yeah. Uh, yeah, it'll be – I don't think they're going to be a nickel enough to really need That's a couple true, of different not guys. Um, not not in this game. You I'll, want Stubblefield back for next week, though, or else you are looking at guys like that probably. Oh yeah, that's the Sooners. So <laughs> he'll they'll need Stubblefield back. He will be back. Um, I'm get so there it is. Ding ding ding. Yeah. Oh. You're listening to the oh. KSO show. Do you want to lock it up? <laughs> um, and if we're looking at some of the keys for this game, I know we've touched on some of the storylines. Can they win with that same, I guess, buckled down formula? And then we discuss the injuries. So let's look at some. Keys to this game, and you can offer up yours as well, Flando. But I and I've said this on many shows throughout the week that I have been on, and I really feel that we're we're kind of talking about a fast start being pretty critical in this one, just because I don't think either one of these sides have the offensive output or firepower in its current form to be well equipped to play from behind. Like a two possession game certainly feels like a four possession mm-hmm. game. It's not like, oh, you're down 10 and we can erase this lead, you know, with a drop of a hat. Not with these offenses. It takes some pl- plotting around a little bit to get to 10, right. I-, I think, especially when you're playing against pretty good defenses that are in this game as well. So that 10-point lead kind of feels like a 20-point lead in this one, right? So I think a fast start is pretty critical. If a team gets out to an early 14-0 start, then you're also forcing that team to throw it more than they want to, which is something mm-hmm. we'd already talked about. If a team throws it 30 times, that probably means they lost. That's what I'm saying. Do you, would you feel comfortable with Will Howard throwing uh, early and often thir- uh, upwards of 30 times? I would not. No. And would you, if you were Oklahoma State, would you feel good about it if that was Spencer Sanders doing no. it? No. Right. So you want to be able to dictate your own terms. A fast start is important. Because if you can jump out to a two-possession lead, let's say in the first quarter, and that team feels panics just a little bit, mm-hmm. gets away from the game plan just a little bit, starts to air it out a little bit more than they want, I think you're then you're creating a situation in an environment that could be conducive to turnovers. I agree 100%. Also because you can't really count on, you hope, we can keep saying every week, oh, this could be a week special teams makes a play and, and turns this game into something that allows K-State to make something happen. The defense, you know, gets a pick six. But – You can't always count on that, and the first thing I think is offense has to get going early, like it did against Nevada, with Will Howard found Amad Bebe on the second play of the game with a big shot. If that could happen for K-State, if they could draw that up the exact same way and and make it it work, they would take that, and it would help them in this game tremendously, because I agree, I see a dogfight 
down to the finish, a defensive battle. Um, I don't know exactly. I mean, we're about to probably make our picks here sooner or later, but I expect it to get you know close to the 20s, but still a tight battle, and the defense is making the difference on both ends. I mean, if my second – that was my first key, obviously. Second key, I'm really looking at field position being pretty important. It's probably going to be the case – for the Wildcats as long as they don't have Skylar Thompson, which hopefully this is the last game that that's the case. Yep. Oklahoma State, they're probably going to be battling uphill against that all year. I mean, if you listen to Mike Gundy at his weekly press conference, he basically said, you know, we got to have short fields. We yeah. have to play great defense. We have to take care of the ball. He seemed very, very bored with the way that they have to win this year just because they are lacking – the playmaking weapons that they typically have. I mean, mm-hmm. they don't have Justin Blackman anymore. They don't have Des Bryant anymore. They don't have Tom Wallace anymore. They don't have Chuba Hubbard. I'm probably missing some other – Stoner, I think, is top 10 career in catches in Oklahoma mm-hmm. State. He's gone. That's an underrated loss as well. So they're kind of having to do it the same way. But we're going to talk about limiting offenses, limited offenses, and probably – not a whole lot of possessions in this game because yeah. I imagine we're going to have a lot of runs. I mean, this game starts at 6 o'clock, I believe. It could be over by 8. I yep. mean, that's a little hyperbole, but that's kind of how quick of a game we're talking about. Short fields are going to be important. I mean, Kansas State really won this, the field position battle against Nevada, especially in the second half. That's going to be pretty vital in this one, too. I want to see the defensive line for K-State dominate what isn't as good of an offensive line of what Oklahoma State had last year. That was my third key, too. I I think typically when Kansas State and Oklahoma State play, whoever is best best at each side of the line of scrimmage typically wins. Um, or Tevin Jenkins. I don't think I think Kansas State's defensive line held up a little bit last year, which is why they had an opportunity to win. But I thought their offensive line got beat last year by Oklahoma State. 2019, they got their ass kicked by Oklahoma State mm-hmm. in Stillwater, right at T. Boone Pickens Stadium, where we're going to be Saturday night. Let's not make any bones about it. Kansas State was dominated in that game. It was the final score 31 to 12, I believe? It, it, it might as well have been 42 to 10. That was not even as close as 31 to 12 indicates. They got their ass kicked, and Oklahoma State was the best team on the each side of the line of scrimmage in that game. I will say this. I, we'll find out on Saturday night. But my gut, just judging by what I've seen from both sides here um, through three games, both Oklahoma State and Kansas State, I think it's almost a reverse of 2019. I hope I'm right. It could be wrong. We'll see. Three game is a small sample size. But I think Kansas State is the one with the better defensive line and the better offensive line. I think they win both of those battles, which is why I feel much better about this game than a lot of people do. And it's yeah. why I think the – the initial line was a little wonky for me because it's a reverse of 2019 in my mind where Oklahoma State clearly was the better side on offensive line and defensive line, and that's why they kicked Kansas State's ass and really decided that game. 2021 feels different. It feels like Kansas State is the one with the advantage on both sides of the line of scrimmage. And a big difference, too, is, I mean... Oklahoma, I, and Oklahoma State's offensive line is really not good. I agree 100%, and that's why I think we're probably all on the same page and likely it sounds like we're all going to pick a cat's victory here but we'll see here in a second because the fact is the only thing different that's not as good as the quarterback play for k-state this year but oklahoma state's quarterback play also is who was i guess was spencer sanders starting but he was a better version of spencer sanders interestingly enough two years ago possibly maybe not as dynamic of a runner probably because he had better weapons Man, too. that is true he did he had way more help around him then too which Obviously, it, is- I mean, it's probably the case for every player, unless you're truly elite. So I guess this tells us Spencer Sanders is not truly elite, but you could tell his caliber, his production has always been, I guess, dictated by the talent around him. Mm-hmm. He doesn't really make everyone else better. It's it's clear that everyone else was making him better. Yeah, no, I agree. I, I, I totally agree with that. And this year, he's starting to crumble under the pressure. And he lost all the guys he could count on. He has to be relied on. And he, he struggled. So this is a big game for Oklahoma State. They're 3-0 and coming into this. That's why it's not going to be an easy one. I think it's going to be a dogfight. But, um, I mean, it's a big chance for K-State, and a defensive line, to really show Spencer Sanders what one of the best defensive lines in the Big 12 could be about. Yeah, and if I'm right, then it could be good things for the Wildcats. Let's let's go to, before we pick a score, mm-hmm. let's talk about each player on all three phases of the game again like we always do. 
um, offense, defense, special teams, offensive player, guy that sticks out, who you think could have the, the best game for the Wildcats. I'm going off the reservation a little bit with mine. I think Will Howard's a really good answer because the QB run game was so effective against Oklahoma State last year. Will Howard ran for almost 130 yards last year, I believe. Um, so I think he is a great choice here. But I'm going off the reservation a little bit and picking a guy who does not have a catch this year. I'm picking Keenan Garber mm, I like because it. I think explosive plays are going to matter. And I think you're going to need one or two if you want to win this football game. I do think Oklahoma State's going to load up that box. And it's probably It could be nine in that box at times because they know what Kansas State wants to do. They know that they might not have the defensive line to keep up with the offensive line. So they're going to have to devote a lot of numbers to that. What was also effective against last year against Oklahoma State was the play action game. Mm-hmm. And if you're talking about it, and then that's when you start to get vertical. Obviously, we know Malik Knowles is going to get vertical. Yep. Um, but who have they all spoken through throughout the offseason and fall camp about a vertical pass game? It's been Keenan Garber. Absolutely. I think there's a chance maybe he gets sneaks in and gets behind the defense at he, some point. We saw something drawn up for him when Skyler was, you know, dropping back against Stanford that obviously – um, was off, but also called on a pass. Uh, you know, Garber was interfered, but I think that's a good answer. Mine, mine is the guy you said that you think is a good answer as well. And Will Howard. I mean, I think this is even more of an important game going against this defense, where he has to be really sharp. I mean, Nevada, he could get away with them being kind of putrid on the on the uh, the rush defense, whereas this Oklahoma State rush defense is going to be a lot different. Um, a lot more guys to the the box a lot more intimidating just in general he's going to have to continue to make the right reads and then he's also going to have to be the guy at times when Messingham you know picks his spots wisely makes the correct throws and delivers the throws to guys like Garber and Malik Knowles downfield put you on a spot you're up first defense <sighs> you know I mean I, I, I think it's got to be a defensive lineman so I'm, I'm going to stick with my guy and King Felix and say that he's going to continue what has been a really, 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 really good first three games of his, you know, young, still young, you know, career. I mean, I guess of his, is it sophomore year? Is that, is that right? Uh, Technically, I guess second, third year. Second year. It's the, no, it's his third. I know. It's, it's, this is second. what happens when you it's have It's a year COVID. number two. It's a year number two. Year number Technically, two. my eligibility standard. He's, he's a still, freshman. He's still, still a true, yeah. true freshman yeah. even, but it's his second year. Second year. He's, you know, he's played. And, but this year he's come out with another level another size and is one of the most dominating players especially with Khalid Duke out has to be big has to be disrupting Spencer Sanders and on that edge there um, sp- keeping Spencer Sanders contained is always going to be important because that's where Oklahoma State could get their chunk plays I think you're right it's going to be the defensive line because that's probably where they're going to, I mean, it's going to be that front six front seven has to get the job done against Oklahoma State's rushing attack because that's what they wanted to do yeah and uh, they're going to try to control the game that way. I just think I'm thinking more interior defense alignment. And, and uh, you know, I thought about Timmy Horn, even thought Eli. about Jalen Pickle because he has played on the outside. But I do think Eli Huggins, he's had a quite, quite good, really good season. He's got to fish a play sometimes and make that tackle. tackle Tackling sometimes is hit or miss, but he's the guy who probably being the most disruptive. Also the guy with the most experience against Oklahoma State. He's played in this game quite a few times. So I do like Eli Huggins, as, it's a as you said. Offensive line than I used to have him too. Yeah, and and I'll go back and we'll do special teams now. And I'm and I, and I think this is one of the things I said before last game. I, I mean, and it bared out because the turnover is what you had to avoid mm-hmm. if you were Kansas State. If you're going to beat Nevada, they did. That's why I kept saying, "Well, Howard punting is okay sometimes. It's better than giving the ball to the other team, of course." So punting is okay. It also could flip the field and do all those things. His kickoffs were pretty vital too because it can also really pin a team back. I think Ty Zender plays a large role or needs to play a large role, needs to be effective. Can't shank another 16-yard punt. I don't even I, – I love that pick, but I don't, I'm don't. i going to go with Phillip Brooks because I don't even know if we've really gone with the guy that's supposed to be, you know, the all-Big 12 kick returner for, you know, K-State. But um, – I think this is the game, you know, first Big 12 game of the season. If he wants to make a difference and and take something back, this would be the week to do it and really get some juice for a team that needs it and, you know, hopes to get Skyler Thompson back sooner than later unless Will Howard's really ready to come out and sling it and not turn it over. We know Drew picked a K-State win. 
and it's on the site because the KSO pick six is yeah, up. So they all know ours, they too. They all know ours, know too. They all know score. the score. Uh, the KSU underscore fan picked the K-State win. Chris Nelson is the, the, the one sour sour boo of of the – Sour – uh, yeah, I, I avoided that word, but hey, yeah, he's the one that sucks. Okay, he might be fourteen and four, <laughs> but he picked a cat's loss, <laughs> so he sucks. I hope he's listening to this. Yes. All right, Get in what there. do you got? You got a cat's win, we know. Yeah, I got twenty four twenty, cats winning in a still a dog fight. Um, and down the down to the end, I, Will Howard obviously, like I said, needs to be sharp. Uh, we need to make some field goals. Winkle needs to be sharp as well. Like. Every point counts in, in these types of games, and um, and and the chunk plays every every so often when they can get chunk plays is going to be huge. Obviously, I have a Kansas State win too, and I feel oddly really good about it. So maybe that's bad news. We'll find out because think about those keys I talked about: a fast start, Kansas yep. State. Yeah, I knew they ended up throwing the pick against Stanford and Arlington on the first drive. Skyler did because it was a ball he probably shouldn't have thrown. However. Still, fast start. That drive was a scoring drive. Nevada, that drive was a scoring drive, right? They got in the end zone. They they have gotten out to fast starts this year. That's the way that they've done. They they were they had Southern Illinois to put down twenty one to three before it got got messy. This is a team that's been on fast starts this year. So you feel good about that key. Yeah. Field position. They just won it against Nevada pretty convincingly despite having a sixteen yard punt. Think about the it. Third quarter where they barely had the ball, but they yeah. had every think, other think, think about it that sixteen yard punt doesn't happen. Think about how how significantly they win field position yeah. in that I think they are much better on the line of scrimmage on both sides of the ball than Oklahoma State. Like all those keys that I think is important, that is shown to be important during this series, I feel good about. You also have to think about Oklahoma State. They're not used to winning with this formula. This is not comfortable for them. You could tell in Mike Gundy's press conference, he was bored out of his mind that they have to win this way. Basically with smoke and mirrors or doing the little things and winning in the margins, right? Mm -hmm. They are used to winning because they overwhelm people with their offensive playmakers um, all those draft picks and future NFL studs that we just talked about. We, I mean, we talked about Chuba Hubbard. He's the starting running back for the Carolina Panthers now that Christian McCaffrey's hurt. So that's the way they won. Explosive playmakers. They had Their skill positions were freaking loaded for years. They're not used to winning this way. This is not comfortable for them. This is comfortable for, for, for K-State. This is the way they want to win. This is the way Chris Kleiman won at North Dakota State. Yeah, Gundy's that, best. that fourth quarter against Nevada, that's what we, we saw Kleiman's teams do in Fargo for years and years and years. So Kansas State is completely comfortable with doing it this way. Spencer Sanders, you probably don't feel comfortable about Kansas State's passing game. You don't have to, you don't have to worry about Oklahoma State's either, unless they, you know, get a stick, well, get, unless they get a stick up their butt and they feel and they and they do something really really crazy. But it's more it's more it's more likely he'll throw four or five turnovers than four or five touchdowns. That's just the way his career is gone. So there's a, <laughs> and every little crevice, angle I look at that I think is important of how this game is going to unfold. I like Kansas State a lot. The only two things that would concern me, it, the the only things that would concern me would be Will Howard playing at a raucous road venue for the first time because he did last year, but he that it was COVID crowds. There were, there were nobody in those stadiums, and the fact that he also turns the ball over. Those things kind of go in hand in hand with each other. So that's the way Kansas State loses. Don't do it. Will. If they avoid that, if they're overwhelmed by that venue, you have to feel really, really good about it. That's why I have, this is a two score game. I can't stay winning 27 to 14. Yeah, baby. I love it. I mean, that's the way it needs to be. And I hope it happens that way because that's the thing, though, too, is this isn't a team that's going to go lightly, you know, who's probably the most pissed. Uh, guy on this on the whole Oklahoma State sideline is Mike Gundy um, Spencer Sanders probably upset too for not having his guys Tylen Wallace and all the all the weapons and, and protection they had from last year but Mike Gundy's even more mad they want this win it's not going to come easy but like you said I think you laid it out perfectly K-State wants it like this they, they want to play a game like this they're used to it it's been this way whether it's K-State through Snyder or K-State through Kleiman grinded out games are the way it is and this is also still, especially, I mean, like, I'm, I'll say it, um, you know, I've said it a d few different areas. Daniel Green is kind of what it hinges on. Um, and if he, he stays healthy throughout the season, this defense is going to continue having really special game after special game. Four out of the five of us have the Cats. I'm the only one that probably has this as a two-score game. I think everyone else is probably envisioning something 
much more tight. We'll find out on Saturday night in Stillwater. Hopefully when we're on a podcast on the KSO show afterwards, we're talking about O-Dub. For Gray Flanders, I'm Derek Young. This is the KSO show, and he'll tell you. Tell your friends. Yep. Tell them.